Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Maggie and the only thing I love more than makeup is customizing eyeshadow palettes. I have long since given up the idea that every palette is perfect. Some are near perfect and they just need a little tweak to get to the point where they're exactly the kind of eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use on a regular basis. So I'm going to go through four palettes that I have customized in my own way, shape, and form, tell you how I did it, whether or not that made the difference for me, and I'd like to hear from you all and see if you have gone the extra mile and tweaked an eyeshadow palette to help Help it suit your preferences. So if you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every single week. Should this go in the BYOP palette remixes playlist? I don't know. I feel like it kind of fits. Yeah, okay, why not? I'll put it in there. It's somewhat related. It'll do. So let's dive on in. I'm gonna start with the smallest eyeshadow palette that I have um, messed with to get to how I like it. This is part of the e.l.f. Duncan collection, and I will say off the bat, this palette looks the most poorly done. <laughs> I took shadows from two quads, this one being Boston Cream and the other being Chocolate Frosted with Sprinkles. The shades that I stole were from the Chocolate Frosted with Sprinkles, these two satins right here that I think are so pretty. I think e.l.f. does satins really well. It was those chunky, really stupid shades that I didn't like. You can see my full review on it. I'll link it up above. Uh, in fact, Editing Maggie, show the original Chocolate with Sprinkles and Boston Cream palette. There were two shades that I liked from each quad, these two mattes, and then the shimmers in the other quad, so I thought why not put them together. Admittedly, this yellow matte right here suffers from the problem that a lot of light yellow mattes do in that it is not super pigmented. I have found, however, if I can mix it with the brown matte, I tend to get a better result overall, so that's just something I'm gonna have to do, but I think this is a better version of the quad. It coordinates really nicely because now I have a shimmer and a matte for each shade and so that makes my looks really effortless and it kind of puts them together for me. I will say though, I did this wrong. I just straight up lifted the pans out of the quad don't do that. This is DIY Maggie. I am not good at any of that. Sometimes I'll tell you guys that I did something and one of you will comment like, wow, I'd love to see a tutorial. And I'm like, damn, me too. Because I did this the wrong way. Basically, I tried to see if the glue was loose enough that I could just lift it up on its own. It wasn't. And even with an open flame kind of loosening the glue, I still bent these <laughs> significantly. You'll notice that in close-ups, which is why I picked the shimmers out as opposed to the matte, because I figure if it's the shimmers that shatter, I can at least press those a lot easier than I can if it were the matte, so. That's done. It's a lot of effort for what is ultimately a $3 eyeshadow quad, but I really wanted to salvage something from that experience because I've talked at length about how much I didn't like this Duncan collection that e.l.f. put out. I figure if nothing else, this was a great way to do so, and it's got me looking at the shadows a little differently, and it's just, it's easier. It's neutral with a bit of a twist, and I love yellow, so why not? Here's one that I actually did film. I took the Goopy shade Love Stone out of the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. You'll recall from like my review of this palette, which I will link up above, that I did not think this shade was useful. It's worse than Vaseline. It's a weird texture and it just, um, it grips in a way that's painful. So like if I put this on my lid, like if it gets too close to the crease, which it does because this is a slimy, for lack of a better word, kind of texture, so it's gonna migrate. If it gets into the crease, then my crease and my lid get caught together, and that hurts. Also, it's just not a shade that serves any purpose. Like, it doesn't enhance the shimmers. It doesn't really do anything except take the space of a valuable eyeshadow. So I did film me extracting the shade, getting rid of the goopy shade entirely, and then I pressed in a pigment, the MAC Rose pigment, and so far I think it's working out pretty nicely. So I did film all that. I'll leave it linked up above. But I think throwing in a pink shade, especially one with a gold reflect, that sort of 
melds really nicely with the other shimmery textures of the palette. That was a pretty good move. I think it works pretty well. Pressing it gave it a bit of an odd texture. I do have to kind of scrape my brush a little bit to get it to adhere on my eye because it's just, it's quite a pressed into the pan. So good job, Maggie. Way to go. Otherwise, I'm glad that I have this as opposed to the Goopy shade. This isn't like the biggest customization because I only changed one shade, but that one shade really grinded my gears. I was not a fan, so I'm glad that I have something that I actually like in this palette. It's also helped me to create some new looks with it as well. The next two are ColourPop palettes, and the nice thing about ColourPop is that you can actually depot the shadows pretty easily. So I did also do a video, <laughs> everything is a video now, where I depotted all of these shadows, scooted them around, and um, created my ultimately perfect palette, so I'll leave that linked up above. The first one is the original High Tide Editing Maggie. Please throw up what the original High Tide looked like. Very monochromatic palette. And I think blues and teals are beautiful, but it just wasn't something that I was reaching for a lot. So I ended up purchasing the Lush Life palette to kind of add a few more interesting colors in. And this is what we got, folks. It's so cute. I really like it. It's still really bold. There's still some teal in here and um, a lot of the teal shades that I like, but it's got a bit more going for it. And you know what? You could do a neutral look with this if you really wanted to. If you wanted to just do like these shades right here, that could be a neutral look. I really like how it turned out. I've been having a lot of fun playing with it and it doesn't feel so limiting as it originally did with just the teal. Glad I got to play around with it and I've switched this a little bit. In fact, sometimes I debate taking my Lush Life palette where all the rejects kind of went and um, just taking this color story and merging it with some of the deeper mattes that are still hanging around in there. I don't know, we'll see, but right now I'm really, really enjoying this. I think it's so fun. Along with that, I did take a few of the shades, one from the Lush Life palette and then a couple that were also in the original High Tide palette, and I threw them into the Sonic Bloom palette. So my original beef with the Sonic Bloom is that there were a couple of shades that I felt like were repeats and it just needed a little bit of extra fun. Now it's basically a rainbow palette for people who don't like rainbow palettes, which is my calling that those are my favorite genre of palettes. I love how it all turned out. So really all I did was add this shade here and then these two shades. I didn't exactly reinvent the wheel, but I think it's fun. It still works with the palette really nicely because we have some really wonderful shimmers here and then it kind of coordinates nicely with the deeper, richer mattes that are also a little colorful. I'm just, I'm digging it. I love how this turned out. I think it made a palette that was already pretty colorful even more so, but in a way that still feels manageable and still feels like I could tone it down a bit if I needed to. Okay folks, that is it. Those are the palettes that I have customized and made my own in one way or another. None of these were super elegant, by the way. There are a lot more YouTubers out there who just do it better than I do, probably because they think about it and then they go for it and they actually watch videos and listen to the instructions in those videos, which can't relate. But if you all have done something similar, leave what you did in the comments down below. If you can like link me to your Instagram or something like that, even better, because I'd really love to see a visual of how it all turned out. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!